Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Get up over here. Ah. Welcome back to After the Episode. Red Trout Black Drum by Bye, Chico. Chico. <laughs> she reads. <laughs> she reads. All right, guys, well, we start out in the kitchen, not cooking. Mm-mm. Teresa's is packing up for the Armageddon, is what I said. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, she's uh, doing our little uh, lunch box, getting mm-hmm. things ready. That's what that's my nickname for her. lunch box. lunch box. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we show how we take what we take in our lunch bag, and it is our lunch bag because you steal stuff from me. Because when we got to the hammock, what did you say? What's in our lunch bag? <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, those e shots are amazing. If y'all never tried an e shot. Um, it's an all-natural energy shot, um, and it's got uh, adaptogens in it. If you actually, if you sit down, you'll, you'll chill out, and if you start to move and do stuff, it'll kick in. And the more, you can drink up to two a day, and the more you drink, the healthier you get. It's got a ton of nutrients in it. Yeah, they're not like the um, ones it's that not make like, your heart. <laughs> yeah, every, the energy, all the energy drinks out there, the five hours and the month, that stuff is horrible for you. So E-Shot is a great alternative. It's part of our nutrition yes, so, so, program. Outcast Bait Shop. Outcast is new for us. Mm-hmm. It's downtown. It's Justin that. Rabone told us about it. Thank you, Justin. Mm-hmm. And that place was amazing. If you're ever in Pensacola, I say go in there and, and find and look yeah. for some tackle and some uh, clothing and stuff because they got some cool stuff. Outcast, Outcast Bait, bait and tackle. tackle, yeah. They got live shrimp. They got a freezer full. They got whole bonitas. Yeah, they had a whole bonitas fishing. for the shark fishermen frozen. They got everything. We had to do the bayou this time. Because it was a 25 mile an hour wind. Why are you still in an outback when you got a Revo sitting in the garage that hadn't even got dust on it, brand new? I'm a creature of habit, like you say, a little deer on the deer path. I always do exactly, I mean, if I go fishing, you know exactly what I'm going to pack and, and exactly what I'm going to take. So I don't like to change too much, but it's very hard to pee in the Revo. So it comes down to peeing. And then I sit on the curved. Uh, nose, turn around Backwards into in, the Mirage in Drive. Pee, right in the Mirage. We both pee in the Mirage Drive. I pee on my knees and she sits on the little curvature of the outback. When summer comes and it's warm and we're offshore, you've got that mesh seat and then the scupper holes underneath. Yeah, you just pee right so in the normally seat. Normally I just pee suit. in the seat. And, cause so I ladies, if, you like, if, if you're out and you pee a lot and you drink a lot of water, outback is a comfortable You should be though. You should be drinking a lot of water and you should be peeing on yeah. the water. You shouldn't I pee be five out. times the whole time I'm out there and I just get on my knees. And now uh, that the peeing is yeah, over. over. <laughs> well that brings us to, we're, we're throwing live shrimp today in the episode and we're mm-hmm. using the torpedo bait bucket right there. Hopefully we show how well this thing works. I think you did. How yeah, it I floats did. subsurface but um, like you know when you open this if it's sitting like this, and I'll spin it around to where it is sitting like this, and just I will open that in the water and reach in. But it doesn't like sink, like it's not like sitting like this. It's sitting this way in the water. And it's, yeah, it's called a torpedo because it actually sits subsurface and trolls underwater and about a foot down. And of all the things you could be dragging, this is the most minimal that we have found. Mm-hmm. We made them out of PVC, but PVC is so much heavier than this plastic. If you go offshore with a lot of cigar minnows and pinfish and stuff, yeah. this is the answer. And my shrimp, right up to the very end, I mean, I let three go that were still alive. I'll put it in the description below. We have several of them, we love them. We use them for our guide service, mm-hmm. uh, which we're booking a lot right now. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants to go fishing with us here in Pensacola, let us know. Comment below or hit us up at tileonthefly at yahoo.com for the 30 mile out kayak charters. Mm-hmm. You hooked a nice fish. I did, yes, and I don't have the Mirage 180, so I couldn't back up uh-huh. <laughs> like you did. He's like, I don't need that backing up stuff. What does anybody need that for? I need it for? now. Ooh, man, it was like having a boat and throwing the boat in reverse. Yeah, because you see mine, he ran right into the pilings. If I'd have had reverse, I could have backed him up out of there like I told you to do when you got home. Now that little three, four pound drum I caught, that sucker has the ability to pull a kayak. There's nothing you can do about it except maybe fight him with his hand and get a paddle and try to do this number with one hand. Extremely awkward. Yeah. Now with the I just got to reach down and pull my little string that says reverse. Boom. And then I'm paddling backwards as I'm fighting the fish with two hands. Pulling him out of the impile. And I'm able to like kind of dial in how much force to give him. It worked amazing. It did. You got your fish. I didn't get mine. <laughs> <laughs> All because of the Mirage 180 drive. All right, yeah, GoPro, stop. GoPro, stop. That was funny. (laughs) 
It wouldn't listen to me. So that the, voice control on the GoPro 5. The GoPros have these this voice command feature, and I can just turn and say, GoPro, stop. Beep, beep, and beep, it beep. Stops. And I don't have to touch the damn thing. Mm -hmm. But if there's any kind of racket around, and there was a lot of industrial noises and wind, it, it kind of just gets confused, and it won't respond to your voice. So it was kind of funny to watch you. GoPro, stop. <laughs> GoPros, it won't listen to me. Then we moved on to this little cut that narrows down like a bottom. I love that cut. I love yeah. that cut. There's some oyster reef in there, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's uh, the tide sucks through, so it always holds fish blowing the wind on that and the spot. Current was ripping it through there, and, and you can sit where you can see the um, poles that mark the oyster. So all I was doing was throwing to the front and letting my bait drift all the way back down, and I got three hookups, landed one. Now, uh, you see the line cutters ring around my neck on the orange string. I always wear this. I wear it if I'm at seminars where or where. I don't have it on right now, but uh, get you, it. you'll see it. And um, <laughs> it's right here in the video. Teresa, I'll throw it up, picture up. You're supposed to be having Here's it. Here's the picture right here, Teresa. I'm going to put it over her face. You're supposed to go get it. There it's it is hanging right in there. there. Interesting, something interesting. Um, hmm. Now, I had to use this the last two or three times we've gone fishing because Ty forgot to, uh, I say Ty, but it's not his fault always. Sometimes uh, I, should, I, I should be out there rigging the kayak, but he forgot to put my paddle on my kayak. So I've been using this uh, to paddle with <laughs> out of the launches. And I forgot how handy this thing is because you can, you can hook on to the, uh, the the docks and pull yourself in. So I, I really liked having it actually. Can't um, find it. Can't find I'll it. I'll put huh? a picture in her face right here. Yeah, ring on a string. Ring on a string. So I can't. I have to rig with that, and I have to have it on the water. Why for, you put it up there? Because you like rigging that area. Yeah, I usually I rig right here, so I put it around my neck, and it's just it's so convenient, and I just will never forget it when it's around my neck. That's why I cut the. The ring part off the velcro. The velcro. Ring. I just, for me, that's just the velcro ultimate rig. Right here, and then you run the string through the little. Now, some people will uh, take a, 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 a zip tie and zip tie to that to the rail of a boat. Mm -hmm. Voila! They'll zip tie it to the rail uh, to the rails of the kayak around on the seat. Some the, uh, the the butt end of a rod, so you can stick them anywhere. Trash View Island. <laughs> <laughs> 1-800 relax, relax with trash. And this is the hammock that I was using. This is the Eno Double Nest. It's a two-person hammock, so all we have to do is take one and we can both lay together in it comfortably and sleep. But it fits like tiny, tiny, tiny. I mean, it squishes up really small, so. We do take them with us everywhere in a yeah, backpack. We keep them in the car. And uh, we have a single nest and a double nest. We, we took it to Mardi Gras and took a nap between parades. We'd taken it to uh, the boat show and found a place after the boat show to eat lunch. Yeah, we actually have to do this Palm Beach uh, boat show coming out. Palm Beach boat show, yeah. If y'all are in Palm Beach, Florida, or anywhere near, we are, we're gonna be there at the boat show in the Anetic booth with Anetic, the hoodie gear we, you see us wearing. Set of trees nearby in the parking lot. <laughs> I will be taking a nap before that show opens because we're driving all night to get there. Yeah, we leave, uh... <laughs> What day do we leave? The 24th, we get there on the 25th. So we'll be at the Palm Beach Boat Show, the 25th. It smells delicious. <laughs> it's my coffee. Um, <laughs> we, we use them all the time on the road. All the time. Just to stop and take naps somewhere. Because it's like, you know, you got a queen size bed. You can lay yep. together and sleep. And I've yeah. slept comfortably for an hour or two. We, in we have three hammocks, and, and they're in all the cars all the time. They're in the kayaks all the time. And, you know, you just have a bed, a queen bed, with you raise your feet up, and it's very comfortable, and you knock out anywhere you are. If you're an outdoorsman, do a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing. This is a must, man. And it's not just about sleeping overnight. This is about just taking a break, stopping in a Walmart parking lot, going to the back and hanging it up and, and just relaxing. We've done that. Yeah, we waited yeah. for the tires to get, we were on a trip. We were here looking for a house in Pensacola. Oh, that's right. We we're waiting we for our tires to get, to get done. Tires done. And the employees had a picnic table underneath an oak tree on the side of the tire and lube. That's right. We hung this up and laid there and waited for the car. Did work on our phones and and, and just laid in the hammock. You make friends everywhere. Mr. Murray here was a nice fella. He was just an e eco tourist. In I his like kayak. his life jacket. His his had his life jacket he got in 1972 and he still had it, man. I only put. Um, Sunsect on my arms, not yeah. thinking. Here it is, right here. Sunsect. Ta da! It's the best no see in prevention, but I'll have all that I in did the description was do this. As well. So I have no bites on my arms, 
But as soon as, I, you know, right here where I didn't. Bam, 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 they knocked. Bam, bam, bam. I made a pit stop at Pensacola Kayak and Sail. Brian kayak works and there. Sailing? I'm not sure. They are right on that bayou so you can pull in when you're fishing and get gear if you need it. Um, it's, it's a nice kayak shop. It's nice that it's right on the water. They do demo days. They got, they a, got demo. a demo day coming up, I think, on March 17th. March uh, 17th, by Chico. If we weren't busy, I, we'd be at, at that sucker demoing boats because I yeah. want to try out that Pescador Pilot. And... Yeah, if, if y'all want to see us do the Pescador Pilot demo in the water, comment below. And uh, I really wanted to throw my jerk shad. I'm very partial to this rig. So I'll show y'all how I used to do the worm and how it relates to the, to the gulp jerk shad. So this is how you rig up a worm if you guys don't bass fish. You just put it in the nose and pop it out, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. Slide it up to the top to where that bend is. And then when you get to the bend, you twist. Now it's gonna hide the eye of the hook so it makes it completely weedless and it should look like that, right? And then most people go ahead and squanch it up a little bit and poke the hook through the body. And then they bury the tip of that hook in the skin of the worm. So you get that, right? Mm -hmm. Completely weedless, that's, that's how we bass fish. And you could put a bullet weight on there, Texas, Texas rig they call it. Do this for hybrids and black bass, all kind of stuff. Yeah. Same thing, poke it through the nose, with the, get you some worm hooks, pop it out about right there, slide it up, you get to the bend in the hook, twist. Now the hook eye is completely covered. And at this point, a lot of people use this cavity, but what I do, I learned from a bass fish friend, a bass fishing friend of mine, is I squanch it up a little bit and I skin hook it on the side so it looks like that. So with that sort of rig, what happens is when they hit it, there's very little to pop off and I get a really good hookup ratio is to do it like this. And then use this cavity here, put the hook in the cavity, squinch it up, pops out the back, and then you do like the worm and you just barely skin hook it like that. And then when they hit it, whop, it pops through. But I find so much, I get so much more of a better hookup when I just, when I just skin hook it right there on the side, old bass fishing trick. Pops right out on the This is the exact plug that that pelican was chasing. And I throw skitter walks a lot. They're bigger, a little bigger and heavier. Get a lot of range on them. Skitter walk. I'll put that in the description below as well. Love skitter walks, people. You haven't thrown a skitter walk, you need to throw one. You know, uh, I was throwing my Abu Garcia inshore series with 15 pound camo braid. I'll put that in the description. And we were throwing a couple of these pin conflicts 3000s. And we were throwing the red spin my McCain in most of this and pop and spin premier series by McCain and I bundle them up with these tart bungees that's how we travel because there's a strength in numbers right so um, I can lay these in the car and I don't have to worry about the rod tips getting broken mm -hmm. a few comments here well, right here at the comment end comment time it's coming To sure do it up nice. Great show. Rick. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Slick Rick. What's your guys' biggest black drum? Mine's 74 pound up here in New Jersey from Brandon. I caught one in Lake Charles, Louisiana. That was probably 25, 30 pounds. My biggest on the fly rod's about 10 pounds. A dinosaur and dinks. Oh, that was a that big That was one. a huge yeah, one. Yeah. No, that sucker was probably 30 pounds. Yeah, it didn't land him. GoPro stops. <laughs> <laughs> that darn thing wouldn't stop. <laughs> Steven on the water says, you guys have such a dy dynamic duo effect, you'll just blend together so nice, nicely. Like it's not artificial, love the videos. It's not artificial. This is artificial, <laughs> but our love is not. Oh, boy. All right, people, well, thanks a lot for watching after the episode. Every Friday, right here, right? Every Friday, after the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as you yeah, say. Yeah, don't forget to like yeah. and subscribe. We're trying to bust 30,000. 30, yes, we're so close, we're inching, Itching very, very close. See y'all later. <laughs> what?